Today, um, I wanted to go over the remaining homework and the final presentation, so this will be item one on our list. Um, item two, I would like us to wrap up the discussion on JSON and AJAX. Um, we didn't finish looking through the example with Flickr API, so I thought you probably have some questions about it, so I'm going to review the code and make sure that everyone can run it. And then look at some JSON files and do a little more Jason and Ajax, and I'm not sure if we're going to do this by hand. It's pretty tedious, or so maybe just review the code. Uh, the Jason and Ajax will not be part of your final, but it's something that you need to know going forward. And then I'd like to introduce you to jQuery UI and give you some lab time. Um, so that's a lot to cover, and we'll get through as much as we can. But we are reaching the end, so now we need to really remain. Now we need to keep focused, including myself. Aaron, would you like to add anything? No. Not right now? Okay. Right. So let's look at the homework, the remaining homework assignments in the final, and I'll talk about the final presentation as well. So the last assignment. See. Assignment eight. So assignment, you know assignment eight. How is that going with the jig with FAQ? Do you finish it? Is it going okay? It was tricky, but you did. I didn't understand too. I, the, uh, I couldn't do from scratch the particularly the Wikipedia. Uh, I'd love to go over how that works. You know how to import from a site. So it was tricky, but you got it working. And the arrow functions too. That was, that was really good. Uh, and plus the difference between contents and variables. That, that's going to be one of the difference. Right. So uh, we can talk about that. We haven't really talked about constants in this class. I guess it hasn't come up. And that's pretty basic core skill you need to know about. So let me add to my list to talk about the difference between constants and Thing too, um, yeah. One of our other online assignments that I found really confusing that came up to in this week's, we talked about the is like if something is tricky, the whole truth. Right. Is yeah. really well, it is confusing because it's not true or false, it's true to your falsity. So it's, kind of like it's logic, right? It's almost like is it? It's extending the idea of true and false to cover additional types. So we can talk about this as well. Probably not today, but uh, if you yeah, remind me. Right. All right. So we have uh, the next assignment you have is jQuery UI. And um, jQuery UI is a library built on top of jQuery, and I'm going to talk about it today. So. This will be your next assignment, and I think it makes sense to talk about it in more detail when I cover the jQuery UI, but uh, it's actually very fun and very easy to do, and I think you get a lot of impact with very minimal amount of work, so hopefully you'll have fun working with jQuery UI. So this will be your assignment nine. Please. Oh, okay, so it's not okay. Let me fix that. Here in a second. And so after assignment nine, here's the final presentation. Let me share it real quick. Oh, that's fine.
Okay, so now it's working. So, sorry about this. So first of all, the final is worth 200 points as opposed to 100. And uh, the final presentations will take place on March 20th from 10.30. So we have the finals week with a different schedule. We have more time here from 10.30 to 12, so we should be able to fit in everyone to do their presentation. I need to make a note to confirm that this room is available for the final because this is always a question mark. So we need to meet here at 10.30 sharp. You must be here for the final presentation to get any credit. If you don't show up and you turn in your link, this will be zero. So come in for that class. And so what is the final presentation? So the final presentation will have, uh, you're going to create a four page mock business website. I recommend you do a mock business because you are, um, there's not a lot of time left at this point. And if you have to work with a customer, I think this would just take you too much time. So come up with a mock site of something that is of interest to you, a restaurant or artist website, or I don't know, pet shop, whatever you like and then create a, a site with four pages. So this is a pretty boilerplate format. You're going to have the home. Depending on what you're doing, you're going to have services or products. So if you are doing consulting for web development, you probably have services. If you're selling photogra uh, photographs, you're going to have products. If you're selling pet food, you're going to have products. Um, so pick one of the two. Um, and maybe if you have a restaurant, you can have a menu, but so four pages and then about page and contact us page. And so this will allow you to have four pages where you creatively are going to integrate jQuery and jQuery UI components. So students always feel that this is just too open ended, but at the end, I think everyone ends up having a good time. So you need to find a way how to integrate jQuery methods, jQuery UI, as well as a jQuery plugin into your final site. Who knows what jQuery plugin means? Do you have used? You should have used in previous classes. So jQuery plugins, I'll spend time in the class. Didn't you create in your web 110 or 120 a maybe a slick nav or anything like that? Or like a slider. Or a slider. So plugins are code that someone else put together and the idea is you just plug in their code into your site and then you get the effect with a minimal amount of effort right so your job is to be able to follow the steps and then integrate the plugin various plugins that are popular as i mentioned there is a very popular plugin for creating a responsive the collapsible navigation so it's called slick nav and i think this is the one i'll show you in class there are plugins very popular as well for creating image galleries. So instead of doing it from scratch, you'd use a jQuery plugin, such as Lightbox. I think everyone, maybe you didn't know that's what it's called, but everyone probably used Lightbox. You can't use Lightbox because you have used it before, so you need to find something different. There are plugins for validating uh, forms, and there are all kinds of other more interesting and exotic. Uh, students have created plugins to take an image and then sort of um, make it like origami. So it has a certain 3D look to it. And then you just need to look and find something that's applicable to your site and then integrate it. And I'll talk more about it as well. So you need to have jQuery methods, jQuery UI widgets, as well as uh, one jQuery plugin on the site. And when you're presenting your work, you, you will point to the source code and show this is where I'm using the jQuery method and so on. I'm hiding a nav here or showing a nav and so on. And then I'd like you to have a form on the contact us page. And I'd like the form to use form validation. So it might be, it seems like it would be okay to just use the HTML5 navigate uh, validation methods but if you want to go beyond that and use J javascript or jquery you can um do you know what i mean with those words the, J the html5 validation didn't i show this i don't know i did 
I know some people have used it in their assignments. Yeah. So this is where you'd use, when you create a form, you can essentially, it's very easy to use, use attributes to say this field is required. This field is an, e this field is an email. This field is a password. And then if the user doesn't put in the information in this field, you get a browser-based error message saying you need to enter the information. So make sure to add this as part of your form validation. And then you're just going to, on submit, is going to go to a mock success.html page uh, unless you're set up for PHP, but you don't have to do that for this class. So in other words, your action attribute will be set to success.html. And success.html, it just has to say success. It doesn't have to, you just have H2 that says success. So when you click on it, it says success. Thanks for submitting the form, right? I'm not sure for validation what that looks like then. So it's going to look that if you have a field but you don't enter anything, mm -hmm. if you put a required attribute from HTML5, it will say, sorry, this field is required. I can show you. Um, do you guys, was it? Well, it doesn't turn red. It has a, it's a browser-based error message that you can't change. Is that um, called validation or is that just called required The overall approach is called validation. The particular HTML5 five attribute I'm suggesting you use is called required, right? So, um, Yeah, that's what I'm doing. All right, so take a look. So you have a form action. So your action attribute is going to go to success.html. And then take a look here, the username input field has the required added. And so if I try to submit without putting my name, it's going to say, please fill out this field. And this error message comes from the browser. You do not have to do anything else except put the required keyword here. So if I remove this, then it's going to allow me to proceed without entering the data, okay? And then you can also have input type, you know, password, and uh, you can have a placeholder attribute. So take a look through HTML5 um, form, form attributes and then in incorporate those in your form. So when you're presenting the code, first of all, make sure that you have a link handy. You have access to the machine. So you just want to come in here, type your URL, and then your page comes up. And we have a little bit of time constraint. We want to finish on time. If your code works and this bug-free, harmonious integration, so you want to make it look like it's a real site, even though it's mock, 150 points. You also don't use I don't want you to use placeholder content, so don't use lorem ipsum. You actually need to use, do you know what lorem ipsum is? OK, good. Um, you need to use, if it's a restaurant, you need to say our food is delicious, you know, and so on. Right? So it has to work with the theme. That's the whole idea. And then think a little bit about the following points and then go over them in class. What are your biggest challenges and successes? Uh, if you could do one thing differently for the project, what would it be? A lot of students tend to say, oh, plan ahead, and you know, just what is your thing that you would do differently? And then list one thing that you learned is, in this class that you think you will be using again going forward. So take, think about it beforehand, because your presentation will be limited to about five minutes, so you can get through all of them. The more students in the class, I think, then come to class, they watch the videos. So we can expect it to be a full room and everyone is to present. Presentation in alphabetical order by last name. So I'll be calling out 
by the last name. Is he the first one? Okay. <laughs> Always the first one. Right? And um, so that's the final presentation, March 20th at 10.30 a.m. here. Any questions? Are we going to have more assignments from now on, or are we going to be working fine with them? You have one more assignment I just showed you, the jQuery UI. Okay. And then the, this will actually give you practice okay. with this, okay. and then you work on your final. So nine assignments and final. Any other questions? So we need to talk about jQuery UI and plugins so that you have the information. All right, so next on the list, I wanted to finish our example with the Flickr API, so let me find this. Who was able to finish the Flickr API and get it working last time? Most of you, all of you? Well, would you like me to talk about what happens or did you feel like you have an idea? I thought I would go over it. I, in fact, I think I will because I like to um, do this and we just ran out of time. So I have it here. Oh, there is one other thing I need to talk about. Uh, did you receive a link for the evaluations for the quarter? You should have. Did you? Uh, evaluations. So I requested um, evaluations, online evaluations for the class. And you should have received an email. Did you not? All right, I'm glad I checked. So I need to double check that. And then I'm going to give you some time maybe on Wednesday. 15 minutes because I would like you to please take the time to fill them out and we can do it in class so you don't have to take up your own time. I thought you had received those. <coughs> can't count on anything I guess. All right. Uh, One at a time, whoever. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, Josh. Um, what did you say the final presentation will be? March the 20th, and it's posted on, on okay. there. And it should be on your calendar as well. Okay. Clicker <coughs> Jason. So this was our example. I guess we had a tag of butterfly here. And so this is using Ajax. So if you wait a little bit, if somebody else loads a new butterfly image on Flickr, when you load the images, it will add additional images. Right now, maybe no one is uploading butterflies at this time. So let's look at the code. So what we did was we created an empty div container where we actually output the content from Flickr. We use the Flickr API. So first of all, we use jQuery. So we imported jQuery. And then we use the Flickr API, which allows you to grab content from Flickr. So Flickr, I don't know if you're familiar. Who is, not, who is familiar with Flickr? Have you, most of you? Is anyone who is not familiar with Flickr? Okay, so Flickr is a site for storing pictures and um, 
it's like a social media for pictures and I think it's owned by Yahoo now. So you can get, you have to sign in and then you upload your pictures there and you can search for other people's pictures. I used to have an account with them and I felt like they, what did I like about them? I think it was the privacy, something, but any, anyhow, I ended up closing my account with them. I think when you put something there, they technically own it. Yeah. It's like they can share it with anybody. Right. So it was something about the way they approach the privacy issue that I didn't like, and I don't have it anymore. And in fact, as you can see right now, we're working with the images of others. They have, they have uploaded them and then we can publicly see them. Uh, you might be able to make it, you know, private image. I think you can do that. Um, but in any case. You can also tag your images. And so we took advantage of this fact and we said that we're using the Flickr API and we're passing three tags, the butterfly, any kind of tag, and then we wanted the JSON format. And so we use the jQuery get JSON method to get those images because they're stored as JSON data. And JSON, again, is a format for storing data, and I'll talk about it more in a moment. So based on our search criteria, we get the following images, right? Yeah. So whenever you bring up individual message, I wish to have more that you add to that here. Sure. Um, this is also posted in the week nine, so you can just copy it from there. That might be easier. You can Google for the Flickr API, and I found the documentation is not very good. It's hard to find. In fact, I don't know if I can find it again now if I try. So um, you can just copy it from my file. And then we had, uh, we also passed uh, an argument succeeded, and we wrote our function. So if we succeeded with the result of getting the files, then we construct using, again, jQuery methods, um, an image with the tags. And then we appended it to the container. And we also said that we want to have, in this case, I picked five images. So that's why we only get five images at a time. So you can change this number. And so if we get more than five, uh, this method is going to return false and it will stop updating. And, um, and that's it. And then on the, the HTML only has the div with IDF container and then a button. And then when you click on the button, you call the get JSON data and then you load the images. And that's how it works. And behind the scenes is doing uh, what I showed you, Ajax, making Ajax calls, um, using a JSON data file. So it's doing a lot. And also demonstrating the use of a an API uh, application programming interface. And as I mentioned to you last time, pretty much every major company out there, Facebook, Google, Flickr, Twitter, they, they output APIs so that as a developer, you can use their APIs to interact with their, either with their data or with functionality on their site. I'm gonna say that I think that's really super useful because I've done things where I want to put comments on a site and it's really hard to manage the data that people would put if they wanted to like, comment. And so Facebook has an API for making comments in like on your website, which is nice because then they handle you logging in, they handle everything that's like right. that. Yeah, that's very good. So it's helpful. really quick. All right. Any other questions or comments? And um I guess the, the other thing was in the original code, I had also added an error message, and I, we didn't have time to put it in our file. But essentially, the error message is if you get a fail, so you're getting the, so let's see, you're getting, I forgot what, you're getting basically a response from the server. And so if the response from the server is an error message, which is returned as a string error, then you're going to alert the error message. So that's in case something goes wrong. Maybe it can get to the JSON file because the network or, you know, for a variety of reasons. 
And so that means that the return codes were not okay in 200. Do you remember what is Ajax, by the way, from last time? Who is going to remind us? What does it stand for and what does it do? Can you say it louder again? Asynchronous. Okay. So what does it do? Why do we care about Ajax? That's exactly right. That's that's the purpose of Ajax. In some of the examples we talked about Google Maps, you can reload the map without having to reload the site. Searching for content on Amazon. If you start typing it while to complete, again it's getting asynchronously without uploading the entire page and refreshing it. And behind the scenes, it's using this method I, sh I showed you XML. HTTP request, and so what you're looking for is you want this object, actually it's not a method, it's an object. You want it to return OK and 200 status code, which means you're ready to proceed. Any other return value means that you shouldn't proceed because you actually were not able to successfully connect with the server, right? And so JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and let's uh, let's talk about it a little more before we change topics. We're in week 10 now already. Let's see here. So I think we're just going to look at the code instead of writing from scratch this time. What do you think, Jay, uh, Aaron? Let's write it again. I was thinking of just reviewing it online instead of writing it. It's pretty tedious. Um, we're going to talk about JSON notation, like how to use it. I was going to show the example using, first of all, I want to show a JSON file to see what it looks like. So let's see here. Go to desktop. So right now we are about to look at the JSON file to see what it looks like. All right. So this is JSON. JSON is a very popular format for storing data among with, with you can also store data and work with Ajax with HTML, XML or JSON. So as you can see JSON is really uh, looks like an object but it's just text and uh, it's characterized by using key value pairs. So we have we can represent events for some you know um, venue. And so the events are characterized, the three of them, and each one of them contains groups of key value pair. So location, San Francisco, date, and so on, and then location, date. And then the syntax is pretty finicky, so you have to be careful. And you have the square brackets, and then you have the curly braces containing each group of key value pairs separated by a comma. So what you do is you grab this JSON file with JavaScript. It looks like an object, but it's a string. And then you need to use JavaScript to parse back and forth between string and object when you get on the 
JavaScript side, you want to convert your JSON file to an object so that you can work with it as an object. And so JavaScript offers methods to do that, stringify and parse. But this is what a JSON file looks like. And as you can see, it can even include resources such as images. Right? So it's a data storage format. Do you have any questions? Yes, but I was thinking of just reviewing one because it's a, a very, it takes, a, it's going to take a lot of typing and you actually have to upload it to the server. If we just do it, you can't view it locally. So I'm thinking of just showing you one instead of doing it. Yeah, I have posted it in week 10 module. All right, so so we started talking here about Ajax. We talked about the request. And I believe at this point, uh, we are ready to talk about the data formats. Right. So you can have three different ways to get data from a server. So again, the situation is the following. You have a page containing JavaScript, and then you want to update some data to, to that page, for example, some information about a venue and the events in the venue. So this is the scenario we're working with. You're going to use Ajax to get the data, and then there are three different data formats you could be working with. HTML, XML, and JSON. Does, are you following the overall ar the arch of the story? Not entirely. Was that? Not entirely. Not entirely. Um, so basically, like, there's like you're there's Ajax, which is like what we use to communicate with the server, and there's three different types of ways that you can pass data to it, like three different formats. Exactly. So Ajax is the technology allowing us to update a web page without having to reload a page. So Ajax is the technology. And then to update a page, we need data. The data comes in three formats, HTML, XML, and JSON. So HTML is the first one, and as you can see, it's HTML, so this is uh, easy to use because we are familiar with HTML. And it's going to go straight to the page, so it means that you don't have to process it and format it additionally. It's already in HTML. This is great. Um, but there are also problems with it. Um, the main problem is it has to come from the same domain. So you can't get that from a different server if you're using HTML. So to get it with a, to get the data with the H, with HTML format, you're going to use the response text so that it gets sent back from the server. And Would again, it to upload it to the server to do We can do it. It's going to take sure. So if you guys want to do it, we can do it. But I still will go over the lecture. Okay. And so the browser renders the HTML like any other HTML, so you don't have to process. The other format you can use is XML. So with XML, this is an example of XML format. As you can see, it looks pretty similar to what? To HTML. I believe I mentioned last time the difference is that the tags are user-defined. They're not constrained to uh, defini define, predefined tags such as in HTML. You can define your own. In this case, it makes sense to have an event I was going to say, I heard that um, HTML was actually a child of XML. Is that true? Like XML came first, and then they said, let's make something that everyone can use with a certain syntax, and they made HTML. Yeah, I'm not sure that's how it works. I mean, XML used to be a lot more popular before, a long time ago. But XML was. XML. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty big 
Not so much now. It seems like JSON is now the preferred. Well, it was just that XML was like the way that they marked up, and then they changed right. it further down the line to HTML. Could so be like a, um, from it. It's probably true. I just haven't heard of this. So, and so what are the problems with uh, HTML or with XML rather? Uh, the same problem: the data has to come from the same domain, so that's pretty limiting. And also, XML is considered a verbose language, so it's kind of heavyweight to work with. To get it back, you need to call not response text, but response XML method. And then you need to convert XML to HTML because you have to display it on the page in HTML. So that's extra work. And then JSON looks like an object literal, but it's not. It's just data. You're going to get it back with response text. And you do need to write a conversion from JSON to HTML. So this is the tedious part I was referring to, but it looks like you guys want to do it, so we will. And uh, so we have key value pairs. And so they're different. With JSON, you can actually have an object inside the um, JSON object. You can have a Boolean, so it can it can support all these different data types, and you can even nest objects within objects. So it's pretty robust in this way. <clears throat> and so converting back and forth, um, you need to first convert it from string to JavaScript with stringify method. And then you also need to convert, convert the string to a JavaScript object, so it has the parse method to use. So even with JSON, you can only work with the same domain. So then there is an additional technology called, called JSONP or padded JSON, which allows you to work with data from different domains. And to do this, essentially, you have to put your data, sorry, you have to put your JavaScript in script tags, and then it allows you to access data from different servers. And we're not going to do this example. But you take your code from the JSON example, for example, and then put it here. So it has to be wrapped inside a script tag inside a function. And this allows it to pick up data from different domains. So now, because the, it's a JavaScript source, you can have an absolute URL and then grab the data from there. All right, and so this was the la layer of Ajax and JavaScript, and jQuery has added methods to make it a lot easier to work with Ajax the same way as we saw with the DOM. We have the JavaScript and then jQuery, so it's the same here. And these are some of the methods that are built on top of what we talked about last time. So instead of having to call the XML HTTP request object, you can just call these methods here, get JSON, and in fact, this was the method we used in our example with Flickr API. Right? So this makes this simplifies the work to a large extent. Um, you still have to convert it yourself. So you remember in the example with Flickr, we had to construct the image tag. So you do have to convert it. It's not going to convert it for you. So that, that's what I wanted to show you for the lecture. And then um, let's go ahead then and do an example together with Jason. So the first thing you need is the JSON file. <clears throat> So go to week 10 in the few files. Let's see. We'll go ahead and download the image, the data, and the CSS file, please. And put it in your project folder. Mm 
you can thank Joss for this experience later. Oh, it's useful. It's just um, you could kind of do a compromise and just maybe you know copy the code over, but do it like you know in sections or something. Yeah, so maybe something like that. Out. Yeah, I think that might be a good way to approach it. Still be, we'll still see what's going on. All right. So in this case, why don't you also download the JavaScript file? So download. We're downloading all four. So the JS, the image, the data, and the CSS, please. Well, we're in week 10, so it's chapter 8. It's going very slow again. Is this the bus stop one? Yes, I think so. All right, so you should have in the data folder, there will be the data.html. The JSON and the XML. So these are the three different data formats. And you also have the CSS file. What is this? Why is this not allowing me to? It's 
So this will be a bit of a problem because we need to we need the files to be in certain folders and they are not in those folders right now. What you need to have in your project folder is a CSS data image and JS folders and that's where the data would go. I don't know if you are following. Okay. So what I, I guess what I mean is that when you unzip the files, they will not automatically be put in the right folders. You have to manually recreate the project folder. So I'm creating a JSON EX1 folder where, so maybe do this, let's do this together. If you haven't, if you already did it, then just, you know, relax for a moment. So this is the project folder, JSON EX1. And then in this folder, we have to have a data folder, a CSS folder, a JS folder, and IMG folder for images. Right? So now we need to copy the data files that you downloaded, which are in the data folder to the data folder. We actually just need the data.json, but we'll just copy all of them, right? So these are the data files. It is the same data contained in different formats, and we'll be working with the JSON one. So we'll be working with this file, right? Then we need the JavaScript file. So the JavaScript, the one we're working with is going to be data-json. So it's the only one we need. And that's the other thing with this example, there is a lot going on. But just go ahead and copy data-json.js and put it in your JS folder. And then we need our CSS file for chapter eight. And we also need the images. How are you all doing? Are you um No, so the data the JSON has to go in the data folder. Yeah. Only JS files go in the JS folder. And right now I am also moving the images. Okay. 
So what I'll do is, um, let's see. So you have to download the files and zip them and then move them in the right folders. So where did it unzip them? Let's see, seven zip short files to desktop. That's your name, this image. Yeah. 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 We're, we're going to write the HTML page. Just the HTML page, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So now you can close this. All right. And then you can right click here. So I think the setup I can show you now. This is done here. And then name this one. All right, so what you want to have is a project folder. Mine is called JSON EX. In the project folder, you want to have a CSS with CSS8. You want to have data with all these data files. The only one we're really going to use in this example is data.json. So in fact, maybe even, maybe just delete the other ones because there is a lot going on anyway so that you're not confused what is what. So let's just leave the data.json in the data this is the guy we'll be working with. And then the images, um, see this has double images folder, so that's a problem. So I'll copy them in. We don't need all these images, but I can't. It's easier to just copy all of them. So what happened was my and Zip did a image inside the image, so I need to do this real quick. So just a new folder, IMG, and this is where the images will go. And in fact, will be, you see now in the HTML page, there will be nothing because we're getting everything through JSON. Even the images will be grabbing with JSON. So I have to redo the images here. And I think actually it's 12 o'clock, so let's take our break and then we're going to work on this example after the break. Yeah. How do those four separate folders relate to the data JSON examples? Well, we're going to use these folders for our example. example. Yeah, so we need the CSS, we need the data, we need the images. We don't need all the images that are there, but it's easier to just copy all of them right now. We need a few of the images, 
and we only need the data.json file. So if you want to delete everything else, you can just leave data.json and that should be sufficient. And then after the break, we're going to add the HTML and then tie it together. And it needs to be uploaded to a server to demonstrate it working. Thank you. 
The only thing is I took my contact sheet out because I didn't know how to hook it up with JavaScript. I use PHP. 
So we're getting started again and um, we can speak for yourself. <laughs> I have to get their attention. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's refocus back to the front of the room, please. All right, time to get started again. So we, Aaron is going to show you his final project from when he took JavaScript with me. Yes. And so this is just like four pages. Simple, and then this was, um, I did it based on a trip I took. Joss created this logo for me. Um, but like, so you have animation right when the page starts. Oof. And then uh, I have this, this is a plugin, a jQuery plugin that I use. And then on the blog, the blog page, I have this drop down for like each day. So this is like a trip that my dad and I took up to Banff on two Vespas, and then we like did video log every day. And then down here at the bottom, this is a Facebook comment plugin, which was like the easiest thing because when you start looking at like what it takes to put in comments, you have to have like a database, you have to store it, like it's a lot of work. And so this way, like Facebook takes care of like all the headache. You don't own the data at all. Right. All you have to do is give them the data so they can mine it for their bots. And exactly, but in the end, I just thought they can have that data. Um, so this is like this is a really popular uh, Java's jQuery UI accordion, yeah. And then, and then yeah, and then photos. I used a Flickr plugin, so you can just, which is nice because it directly ties into the website. So that, like as you're on the road, if you're updating pictures, people can just they're just magically there. I need to change it into something nicer looking, but and then I used just like plugged in a map. With Google Maps. And that's just a script. Was it for an image? Um, or the this one? Frame? Yeah. Just frame. Yeah. So, so you can use. But yeah, it was fun. I thought this, like, I kind of, I don't know, I didn't think it would be, I thought it would be a lot harder than it was. Like, you just kind of get your four pages, get your basic outline. I think with anything, if you just have an idea of what you want in the beginning, it just kind of comes together. So, and the contact page. I did have a JavaScript one here, but I didn't know how to like do a post back and send email through it with JavaScript, so I just copied the PHP one that Bill built and, yeah, and gave us. That's fine. But the one before this looked nicer, and it was like when you clicked out of the box, it was like the on, it would say that it wasn't valid or something, but it just looked pretty. It didn't do anything. I just This took me a long time to figure out. Getting the scooter to line up right there. Yeah. So it's, I, <laughs> I threw it into uh, Illustrator and I cut the scooter out of the. So like if you look at it, it's two separate images files, the one without the scooter and one with, and then just the scooter, and then I lined them up, and that's really hard to figure out the pixels of like how to get them to like exactly. stop. I was gonna try and make it go like around the page. But after I got this far, I was like, you know, that was <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Thanks, Alice. Very nice. So not to criticize Aaron because his website's great, but it's not a product. So is it okay if we have an idea that's not necessarily yeah, so, a product? Yeah. So so one thing about me is I'm always changing things. From class to class because I feel like I'm improving. Maybe I'm not, yeah. but that's what I'm thinking I'm doing. So I don't think the requirement was exactly the same. Okay. It was vaguely the same. It was roughly the same, but yours might be slightly different. Okay. So you want makes sense. Right. So I want it to be a business. Okay. Right. I don't think that was a requirement, but they have a requirement to validate. So it was a little different. Yeah, yeah, but it yeah. has the same. Portion. Roughly the same. Right. Fair question. All right. So uh, in this case, let's get back to Jason. <clears throat> all right, so for this to work at all, you need to, again, have the following files here. Mm 
magnify. So you have the CSS, the data, which we just need the JSON file, right? So you can delete all the other files if that's easier for you to just clean up a little bit. But are we clear what the other files are? Were, were, right? So these are the different data formats because you can have multiple examples to work with different data types. We just need the data for JSON, that's all we're doing. Um, and then the images, there are more images here than we need, but you need to have an IMG folder. And then the JavaScript, which is the crucial piece here. Data-json.js. And now we're going to go in brackets, and you're going to point your project folder to that folder. So mine is called um, JSONEX-1. Don't put JSON if you're using JSON. Make sure it's lowercase, right? Select the folder. <clears throat> And then create a new file. Let me just get my glasses. This file is going to be called data-json.html. Save as. Maybe he wants me to write something first. Oh, what's the magnifying glass? Oh, wait, you have to do a new one. Yeah, that's fine. You're right. To save it, you have to do a new Okay, so, so data dash json.html. And actually, the HTML file is very small. Let's add the link to the CSS file. So this event is for a fictitious the maker bus where they make different things with Arduino robots and so on and I, has anyone played with Arduino robot that's totally not related to what you're doing <laughs> by the way but does anyone have an Arduino robot by any chance or kit do you know what I'm talking about you know about the Raspberry Pi? Those Lego set things? No, they're not like Lego set. They're circuit boards that you then add code and then make it do things like flashlights and so on. So I think it's like Raspberry Pi. So. Yeah, it's programmed with Python. And then the Arduino is programmed with its own language. So I have one in the office, but. Amazon's web dev con, they did one woman spoke about how she went from being a programmer to getting that as a hobby. Really? Yeah. Into Arduino or into Raspberry Pi? Um, 
it's like making robots to do dumb things. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like the, the mind or no? Well, you know what? I'm going to show you because you probably should know about it. Roughly related to technology. So here it is. I, know, I haven't really put it together yet, but it's these little circuit boards. And then you put together the electronic part of it, the circuit boards. And then after you do, then it has a book with Arduino projects. And then the projects use their own language, which is supposed to be very simple to use. I was a bit annoyed because I know other languages, so now I need to learn a different one instead of using Python or Java. It's like, OK. But the projects are very fun. Um, feel free to come up here and look at it. So some of the things you can do with a project book are um, spaceship interface, love on meter, so measures love somehow, mood cue, a light theremin. Do you guys know what a theremin is? It's a, an instrument from Star Trek. Yeah, so crystal ball. Yeah, so you can program this thing to do different things. And the starting project from here is a blinking lights. So I'm really looking forward to it, but I haven't quite gotten to it. Again, I don't want to pass it around so I don't lose bits and pieces of it, but you can come up here and look at it if you like. So that's the Arduino. That's so yeah, yeah. Now, where were we? All right, and so the fictitious program and page we're putting together has to do with uh, this maker bus that goes around and offers these kind of events. This is what made me, you know, digress about the Arduino. And so now script source is equal to, uh, uh, we need to close the header right here. Yeah, so this is the only header. Thank you. Yeah, so a header is just an HTML5 tag to indicate this is a header. And then source. And then we include the JavaScript file. So let's take a look. So essentially, as you can see, this is all similar to the Flickr example. All we have is just a container where we're going to put all the data. So right now, that's all there is to the HTML page. And um, let's take a look at the other pages that are part of the project. And then we, you, you need to upload it to your server to actually see it do anything. So the JSON file is going to contain three different events with three different locations, three different dates, and a map and some PNG images. And the images would come from the image folder. So maps of Texas, for example. So here is a, a map. So this, the images are also pulled with a JSON file, right? So this is what I wanted to show you. So everything comes from the JSON file. and. Um, Last but not least, let's take a look at the JavaScript file. And this is what I didn't really want us to write from scratch. Um, all right, so now you're going to recognize some of these lines of code because we have talked about it. So, so the first thing you need to do is create the object that we looked at last time, the XML HTTP request object. And then you do an onload function. So onload is the, what is the onload, Chris? Well, no, it loads that function as the page load. So onload is going to ensure that the page has loaded the elements before we proceed. 
And then we call anonymous function that checks whether the server is ready to proceed. So these lines are commented out, but you can uncomment them because you will be doing this on your server. Okay, so there is something called a local server, local host. Some of you might have used it, such as WAMP and MAMP. If you had that local host set up, such as for your PHP class, then you'd be able to run this example locally. However, the line nine might not work. So this is all these little details. But because you'll be uploading it to file zero, it should work. So you're checking to make sure that the status is 200. Do you remember when we looked at the statuses? All right. So we wait for it to be 200. If it's 404, no good. All right. So we didn't find the server or it was the network was interrupted. Various issues can go wrong. So that's a general approach when you're working with that. I want to make sure that you're connected before you proceed. Otherwise, you don't want to go on. But if you get the 200 back, then you're going to parse the JSON file and you're going to get back the response as text. So as you saw, the XML, sorry, the HTML and the JSON get returned with response text. If you have XML, it gets returned with a different, I think it's response XML. And so you get back your response from the server if the server status was okay. And, and so this is what gets you back the file. When you get back the file, then you need to construct the um, the content. And so this is what is uh, what I called, I keep on referring to the tedious part. I think this is extremely tedious. You have to construct the divs containing the images, um, you know, the alt tags and so on. And you construct all this and then you construct however many divs there are corresponding to the number of events in the JSON object. And we did have three. We have Texas, Austin, and I guess California. So you have to construct in a loop a div for each of the objects. So this is what happens in these lines here. And then you go through the events object. It's, you know, it's indexed, so it's 0, 1, 2. And then you go through the map value, the location, and the date, right? So if you looked closely at the, at the JSON events, you'd see, you'd remember that these are the keys from the JSON file. Does this make sense or do you want me to look back at the JSON file? All right, so map location and date. If I open the JSON file, Oh, look at this. These are the keys for the key value pairs, map, location, and date. So we're constructing those, and it's a 0, 1, 2 inside the index. And then we update the page, so we get the uh, element by ID for our container section from the HTML page. And then you always update it with inner HTML. You have to because we're using... Why do we have to use inner HTML always? Here. Why can't we use another text content? Do you remember? What do you say? We need the markup. We need the markup? Is this what you want to say? Well, yeah. tags. Right. Because we're passing HTML tags, we have to use in the HTML. Right? And then we created this. The text folder. What is that? Text content would not work because we are passing all these markup tags. So we constructed the new content variable. We added to it with a plus equal. So it's not this, it contains everything. And then we update it on the page. And then we open, we prepare the request. So we're going to get the data from the data JSON file. And we want it to be with a get. Um, protocol, and we want this to be true, which means we're going asynchronous. We're going with AJAX, and then you send the request. So this is the sequence, and then uh, if you upload this now 
to your with your files you to your server all the files you should be able to see this propagate right so i'll give you some time now to do this and i guess i'll do it as well although i haven't used my browser for a while Maybe I should go to my URL as well. So So you need to go now. You need to use FileZilla to upload the files, and I'll do this on my laptop because I don't know my password. Yeah. It's the same as that I had something like this when I was a kid, minus the programming. Yeah. Was it easy to put together? Uh, yeah, it was okay. But it's like some of the programming or like some of the things that you did with the H2, I didn't understand what they were for. So it's perfect. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's, it's already in here. It's data. It's um, data.json. And then also inside JS, open this folder. Open, yeah. It's data.json.js. That's what she does there. So if you double click on it, this is the JavaScript, and that's the HTML version. So, yeah. If you upload this entire folder, JSON.js. Yeah. You have more in there than you need. Most of these files you're not even using. So we're only using one, they're like data.json. So I need to download each one. So you need to upload the entire folder into your server. Yeah. So if you take week 10, upload the whole thing, you're fine. Like that's good. And then you go, then after that you can find it on the internet. All right, well, the first person who gets this to work, let us know. <laughs> okay, right. work. Ah, right. So they have it. So if you didn't get yours to work, you can look at it. Uh, but yeah, give it, we have a little more time. So try to get your, your own version to work. Have you been to Long Data? To what? Data is technical book performance purpose. It's the shit. Like, Data is basically like, it's a it's or only for technical books. So, like, any computer programming book you want to find, they can probably have it there. Oh, cool. And um, they have like UX design, they have like a UX book club that they meet up, they meet up there once a month. Oh, cool. Every month they read a different UX book. What would they be fun to do? I like it. Yeah, the last time I went to one, it's fun, like, I was talking about books. But you learn books. The other thing is, Sonny, have you been to Ada? No, I haven't. I know of it. It's because they have, there, like, right? boxes of maze, of all yeah. kinds of different kits. And, like, they, they're very much into the maze box. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to go. It's on 15th or somewhere else. They have vegan pastries. Well, now I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> We should have a field trip and go. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we geek out and be like, oh, I have that book. I have that book too. <laughs> right. 
We also have um, office space above it for people who are working. Like a shared environment. So, I guess we have to talk about jQuery UI next time, it looks like. Covered by Zilla, like you guys enjoyed this example?
Yeah, you were right that that should it should be. Yes. So we get ten minutes. Right. On the right track. Well, well, I didn't know, but well, let me. Guys, what do you guys want to do? Do you want to wrap? Do you want to? You want to show your jQuery UI right now, or do you want to keep on working with this? I want to show you jQuery UI just so you can start looking at it. Okay, so that's about JSON. And again, remember this only works on the same server. You need to use JSON P with, if you want to get data from different domains. And always there are, of course, security considerations to keep in mind. So let me let's see here. So jQuery UI. All right. So let me just tell you a few words about jQuery UI, and then you can really you can start playing with it on your own. Uh, but we can talk more in class about it. Okay. So jQuery user interface is a um, stop this, stop sharing. Okay. Let's see if we still have a recording going. How we do? Okay. All right. So jQuery UI is a library built on top of jQuery. So what that means is when you're importing your, your links, you need to import jQuery, and then you import jQuery UI, right? Otherwise jQuery UI will not work. And so what kind of things can you use with, can you do with jQuery? Well, let's take a look here. I don't know why I stopped the screen share. So for example, Aaron was using the accordion in his website. So here is the accordion. And this is an example. And with jQuery UI, they will give you the source code so that essentially you can build your own and just replace the content. If you copy the source and put it in brackets, this should be its own standalone file that you can run, except that they're hosting their own CDN, I guess, their own files. So you need to update the links to the links from a hosted library site. So what we need to do then is to go to Google hosted libraries and search for jQuery UI. So here is jQuery. There is also something called jQuery Mobile, which we're not going to go into in this class, but it's quite nice. Um, and it creates mobile, it creates mobile pages, but they're so nice and easy to use. You can also create it from the for the desktop. Again, I digress. So here is jQuery UI. So here are the snippets you need. So when you're working with jQuery UI, you need to grab the CSS as well as the jQuery file. And you also need to grab jQuery itself and put it above the jQuery UI, right? So you might have code, put it in your file, and then you should be able to run the example. So the, the way that these widgets are constructed, they use simple HTML elements. So for the accordion, you, you have a div with an idea of accordion. The heading is the, the H3 is the section, and then you have a div for the content. And all you have to do is call the accordion method on the accordion div, and it creates it for you. So that's how easy it is. And I'll show you one more. So these are the widgets. There are also interactions. For example, without a complete. So I, I forgot what their example does. Let's see. So this is an example with programming languages. So if I start typing, what do they have here? Java. As you can see, it's going to autocomplete. So that's a feature that you can do with a widget. And uh, if I search for Python, I don't think it has. Oh, it does. OK. And so on. 
So to create your own autocomplete, you need to create an array of your options. And then the, the widget is going to pull up from your options for autocomplete. So for example, I had a student who created uh, zip codes or neighborhoods. I think it was actually neighborhoods in Seattle. So she created an array of Ballard, West Seattle, Fremont, and then her autocomplete allows us to ask what neighborhood, and then it pulls up from here. So this is jQuery UI, and it's your homework for next week. We can talk more about it on Wednesday, but it's really easy enough. You can just dig in probably on your own. And, um, and I think that's where we're going to end for today. What was the thing that you said that you were digressing? What was the digressing about? Oh, jQuery mobile. Yeah, 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 yeah. right. Yeah. 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 I was digressing. Oh, the jQuery model is, I don't know, it's quite nice, but you don't hear much about it. So, well, they haven't, they haven't updated yeah, I guess it's not really used so much. I liked it. Yeah. It's very easy to use. Yeah. So, I don't know. All right, I'll see you all on Wednesday. Yeah.